everyone, I'm Marshall Fagers, here to show you how to take apart and reassemble a 26 series shock. Some of the tools you'll need are a nitrogen tank, QA1 fill tool, shock vise, graduated cylinder, spanner wrench, and other basic hand tools. First step, mount the shock in the shock vise. Then you want to remove the hyper screw. This lets the nitrogen gas pressure out of the shock. To make sure the gas has left the shock, you want to fully compress it, like so and make sure it doesn't extend out on its own. Then you want to flip the shock over and start on the other end. First step here is to take the small little snap ring off that holds the gland retaining ring or otherwise known as a steel washer. Helps to use a clothespin or a paper clip to keep this out of the way. The next step then is to remove the hyper screw out of the gland. At this point, you can compress the gland down into the shock body. Oil's gonna flow out and around, and that's a good time to put my drip cup on the shock. So I'm gonna push the gland down about a half an inch below the snap ring at the top of the shock body. Now I'm going to remove that snap ring. So with a pick, you can get in behind it, and it comes out real easy. Now we're ready to take the shock apart. So slight pressure up, you might have to rock it side to side a little bit, and take the piston rod assembly out of the shock body. Let a little oil drain back in. So now you can do whatever valving changes you need to do, replace any seals that need to be replaced. With the piston rod assembly removed from the shock body, you can see the deflective disc valving, hard anodized aluminum piston, low friction PTFE piston band, the seals in the hard anodized gland, and low friction wiper. Now to put the shock back together. First step, you wanna drain the oil from the shock body. If you're actually rebuilding the shock, we recommend using new oil during reassembly, but since this is a new shock, we're gonna use the same oil. QA1 uses a specially formulated five-weight semi-synthetic oil that's tinted red. Once you get the oil poured out of the shock body, you wanna reset the floating piston height. Uh, in all 26 series, a floating piston can be pushed all the way down to the bottom. So here I'll use a long aluminum tube and the floating piston will go down about an inch. And now you can hear it seated down at the bottom of the shock body. The next step will be to pour a specified amount of oil into the shock. Uh, for a seven inch shock such as this, we need 320 milliliters of oil. So we lost a little bit in the disassembly stage. So I could pour a little bit more oil in here. For a seven inch 26 series shock, it's 320 milliliters. For a nine inch, it's 400 milliliters. Add the oil back in. Now we can reassemble the piston rod assembly. So to do that, we wanna slowly put the piston into the shock body. I'm gonna push this down into the body just until the piston is fully submerged in oil. Once that's done, you can slide the gland assembly down into the shock body. Put the paper clip back on to hold the retaining washer out of the way. You want to push the gland down until it's about three-eighths of an inch below the large snap ring groove on the edge of the body. Once you get that installed, you put the retaining snap ring back into the shock body. This holds everything inside, holds the shock together. The next step will be to compress the piston rod until oil comes out of the bleed hole and fills up to the small snap ring groove on the gland itself. I'll push that down. Depending on how far you push the gland down initially into the shock body, the amount of piston rod that's still exposed when you have the proper oil level might vary a little. But as long as you get the oil up to that snap ring groove on the gland, you'll be fine. So the oil is filled up to that snap ring groove and now I'll put the hyper screw back into the gland. Get that tightened up. 
Next step is you flip a shock over and dump that small amount of oil out. Once you dump the oil out, you want to install the gland retaining ring. You can do that by getting that small snap ring that we mentioned earlier installed. Once you get the gland retaining ring on, flip the shock over and you can reinstall the hyperscrew on the body. It's a good idea to get the hyperscrew started. Uh, I usually turn it all the way in and then back it out about two revolutions. To recharge a shock with nitrogen, you want to use a QA1 fill tool. So you want to put the end of the fill tool in the bearing of the shock. Then you can rotate down by applying a little bit of pressure to the fill tool. It provides a leverage point with the bearing. You want to line up the Phillips screw point on the tool to the Phillips hyper screw. By pushing down with my right hand, apply a pressure to the fill tool to seal to the shock body. And then I'm going to loosen the hyper screw up a little bit to let the gas in and around that screw. I'm going to tighten up the hyper screw and release the pressure to check that you have nitrogen in the shock. Slide the travel indicator up, push down on the shock body, and it should fully extend on its own. As you can see, with just a little bit of practice, rebuilding a 26 series shock is quick and easy. For more info, find us on the web at qa1.net or find us on Facebook.